This is an explanation of Akerlof's market for lemons, adapted to have a more strict iterative dominance elimination structure for multi-agent reinforcement learning. The market for lemons here is a used car market, where lemon is slang for a low quality car. In this market, we have one buyer and n number of sellers. Each seller has their own car that they wish to sell to the buyer, as well as a vague perception of how much each of their cars is worth. The buyer, on the other hand, has no idea about how much any one given car is worth. Here comes the game. The buyer wants to score a deal by paying less for a car than what it's actually worth, whereas the seller wants to score a profit by selling the car to the buyer for more than it's actually worth. For sellers, their actions are represented by a probability distribution in which they can either favor listing or allowing the car to be sold or not listing and abstaining from the market. If the distribution favors listing, chances are the seller is going to list the car. Conversely, if the distribution favors not listing, chances are the seller is not going to list the car. If the probability for not listing is vastly greater than the probability for listing, we consider this to be the seller having exited the market. For buyers, there's the same number of actions as there are sellers, where each action represents paying a price between the values of two sellers' cars. For example, playing the action Q2 represents paying a price in between the values of the lowest and second lowest car, whereas playing the action Q3 represents paying a price in between the values of the second lowest and third lowest cars. So let's say the buyer does have this action probability. Now we're going to instantiate some sellers from lowest quality at the top to highest quality at the bottom. Let's say we have these four sellers and their cars. The first step is that the buyer proposes a price. Let's say the buyer makes a move of Q3. Thus, the price the buyer is willing to pay is in between the values for seller 2 and seller 3. The sellers simultaneously choose whether they want to list their car or not. Let's say that the first three, the lowest value three sellers, list their car, whereas the highest value seller does not list his car. Since the highest value seller does not participate in the sale, the net reward is zero. The seller neither gained or lost anything. However, if the seller had participated in the sale, the net reward would be a negative value that corresponded to the cost of listing, since the seller's car is valued so far above the buyer's price that the seller wouldn't want to sell the car. Now let's look at seller 3. Seller 3 listed the car and it did get sold because seller 3 believed that he could still turn a profit from the buyer's price. However, since the price actually ended up being less than the quality of the car and compounded with the loss of the cost of listing, the net reward for seller 3 actually ended up being negative. Thus, seller 3 will adjust his probability distribution to favor not listing in the future so that he can avoid the costs. Seller 2, on the other hand, decided to list and sold his car. However, Seller 2's quality of car was lower than the price being offered, so Seller 2 turned a profit, and thus Seller 2's net reward was positive. Seller 2 will use this to further incentivize listing his car in the future, so that he can maximize profits. The buyer similarly gets a net reward. The buyer expects an average quality of Q bar based on all the cars that were listed. As these were the cars that were listed in this market, the buyer would expect the average quality Q bar to be right about here. However, the buyer gets more benefits than just the market value of the car. Think about when you're buying a car. You get the utility of the car, perhaps you like the way the interior feels or the way the color of the car looks. So we say the utility the buyer gets is actually a multiplier of Q bar known as C2. This is what allows the game to be iterative dominant solvable. Thus, the net reward for the buyer ends up being C2 times Q bar minus the price the buyer had to pay for the car. However, as this game continues, some sellers will realize that listing their car is not favorable for them as their car is of a higher value than the price the buyer keeps paying. Thus, these sellers will exit the market. This means that in the vast majority of cases, they will decide not to list their car in order to avoid personal losses. As they do this, the cars that are left in the market, the sellers that still choose to list, will have a lower average quality. Thus, the buyer will recognize that the average quality of the cars in the market is going down, and similarly adjust his estimate for the average quality that he should be expecting when putting forward a price. And so, the action probability for the buyer's price will shift lower, as the buyer realizes that he should be paying less in order to not get ripped off. 
as the buyer pays less, more sellers decide to exit the market because they realize that listing their car is unfavorable. As the sellers exit the market, the buyer adjusts the average price of the cars that were listed in the market again to be even lower. Realizing the average quality is lowered, the buyer decides to shift his distribution in order to favor proposing a lower price. Here, the buyer proposes a minimum price, and so seller 1 exits as well. This is the equilibrium of the market for lemons game. The buyer sets a price so low that all the sellers are forced to exit the market in order to avoid losses, and the buyer doesn't get a car. The Market for Lemons game was originally proposed in the Market for Lemons, Quality Uncertainty and the Market Mechanism in 1970 by the economist George Akerlof, who won a Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences. Thank you for watching.